Okay, we are trying to do this on the screen. We'll do this by going to a slideshow. Set up the slideshow. Full screen. Okay. All right, we're going to see whether this will work. We are recording in Cam Studio. That's the one that you have access to. And we are trying to go through this, what we did in class the other day, just to review one thing um, that you should have been exposed to in the past, but maybe not. All right, that is the mass, continuity of mass, or mass flow equation. It comes from conservation of mass. The equation that you're going to see, I'm going to go right-click here, go to pointer options, I'm going to try to go to this highlighter, see how that works. Okay, the equation you're going to see more often, unfortunately that highlighter didn't help, but we're going to see what happens if we just rewrite this. So we know that V1 times A1, okay, that's the equation you're going to see more than anything else. That There's a consistency of flow here. If, in fact, you take the velocities times the areas, which is this flow, cubic feet per second, and multiply it by mass density, you'll get mass per second, or kilograms per second, or slugs per second. If you multiply it by the unit weight, for instance, gamma for water, 62.4 pounds per cubic foot, or 9,800 newtons per cubic meter, you get the weight flow equation. All right, so... Uh, this is not recording too well. We'll, we'll keep going through and then I'll repost this. But these three equations are all the conservation of flowing mass. If you take this equation and multiply, multiply it by g, in other words, if you multiply rho by g, you get gamma. Okay, there you see it. There's rho by g, you get gamma. And this is then conservation of mass. Very often, this is also, you're going to see this written, is Q equals Q, or Q1, or Qn. Q1 equals Q2. And that, in fact, we talked about last semester, that is, in fact, volume flow as opposed to math flow. See if we can go down here and go to the next slide, if it's recording. So I used an example in class that had to do with... Um, a water break in Chicago um, and we went on an assumption that there was water in a water tower. We tried to talked a little bit about energy flow and how um, if you knew the velocity of water leaving the um, the break, if it was going straight up, you could use the equation uh, velocity equals the square root of 2gh, work it backwards V squared over 2G, a velocity head is how high that water will go. You'll see that in class. Um, that's a great one. Remember, velocity head is V squared over 2G. But let's assume here that, as we see here, this was coming out, the water was coming out at 50 foot per second here. Right? And we talked about an energy grade line looking something like this, very flat, a little bit flatter, and then a lot flatter here. And why is that? Well, it's, the reason it is is because of the one fact that we know is that energy loss or head loss is proportional to velocity head, the square of the velocity. So if we go to the next slide here, we see that in fact if it was coming out at 50 feet per second here, it was only traveling at 8 feet per second here. So even though the flows are going to be the same when we start talking about cubic feet, the velocities times the area cubic feet per second, velocity times in the area are equal going all the way through the system. The velocity lifts, leaves here at 50, and it's coming in at 8, more or less, where it's coming out of the tower there before it gets to North Avenue. This is North Avenue, I think it was, or some north side, north side of Chicago. Could be New York, could be Rapids, could be Point, could be any place that you're needing to pull a lot of water, particularly into an industrial district. All right, so if we looked at this, even though it's leaving, coming at 50 feet per second, if it's flying, if flowing out with 50 feet per second, it's flowing through the 10-foot diameter pipe with 8 feet per second. It's a ratio of the areas or a square of the ratio of the diameter. So very often, you know, you want to remember 
v times a equals v times a, but you don't want to forget area equals pi r squared, and you really don't want to remember area equals pi d squared over 4. You'd rather derive that. All right, so going back to the sense that energy loss is, to, is proportional to velocity head. You see here that 50 feet per second and 8 feet per second may not sound that different. Now, this is significantly different, but when you, when you square them, 50 squared over 8 squared, you get that there's 40 times more energy loss per foot of pipe. And that's where the energy losses that occur due to friction, they're spread out over the length of the pipe, 40 times more, not 40%. 40 times more loss through that short 10 foot pipe. I'm sorry, that short 4 foot pipe, then it's flowing through that big 10 foot diameter pipe because the velocities are uh, much, much, much less. So that's a quick review there, and we'll kind of look at these again, end this out. No, we're going to discard. Hit Alt. Oh, we got it here. We can go ahead and hit Stop.